Chapter 3 of Plunkett of Tammany Hall, a series of very plain talks on very practical politics. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Mike Vendetti. Plunkett of Tammany Hall, a series of very plain talks on very practical politics by George Washington Plunkett. Chapter 3. The Curse of Civil Service Reform. This civil service law is the biggest fraud of the age. It is the curse of the nation. There can't be no real patriotism while it lasts. How are you going to interest our young men in their country if you have no offices to give them when they work for their party? Just look at things in this city today. There are ten thousand good offices, but we can't get at more than a few hundred of them. Then. How are we going to provide for the thousands of men who worked for the Tammany ticket. It can't be done. These men were full of patriotism a short time ago. They expected to be serving their city. But when we tell them that we can't place them, do you think their patriotism is going to last? Not much. They say, what's the use of working for your country anyhow? There's nothing in the game. And what can they do? I don't know. But I'll tell you what I do know. I know more than one young man in past years who worked for the ticket and was just overflowing with patriotism, but when he was knocked out by the civil service humbug, he got to hate his country and became an anarchist. This ain't no exaggeration. I have good reason for saying that most of the anarchists in this city are men who ran up against civil service examinations. Isn't it enough to make a man sour on his country when he wants to serve it and won't be allowed unless he answers a lot of fool questions about the number of cubic inches of water in the Atlantic and the quality of sand in the Sahara Desert. There was once a bright young man in my district who tackled one of these examinations. The next I heard of him, he had settled down in her most saloon smoking and drinking beer and talking socialism all day. Before that time, he had never drank anything but whiskey. I know what was coming. When a young Irishman drops whiskey and takes to beer and long pipes in a German saloon, that young man is today one of the wildest anarchists in town. And just to think, he might be a patriot, but for that cussed civil service. Say, did you hear about that Civil Service Reform Association kicking because the tax commissioners want to put their fifty-five deputies on the exempt list and fire the outfit left of them by low? That's civil service for you. Just think. Fifty-five Republicans and mugwumps hold an eight thousand and four thousand and five thousand dollar jobs in the tax department when fifteen hundred and fifty-five good Tammany men are ready and willing to take their places. It's an outrage. What did the people mean when they voted for Tammany? What is representative government, anyhow? Is it all a fake that this is a government of the people, by the people, and for the people? If it isn't a fake, then why isn't the people's voice obeyed and Tammany men put in all the offices? When the people elected Tammany, they knew just what they were doing. We didn't put up any false pretenses. We didn't go in for humbug civil service and all that rot. We stood where we have always stood, for rewarding the men that won the victory. They call that the spoil system. All right, Tammany is for the spoil system, and when we go in, we fire every anti-Tammany man from office that can be fired under the law. It's an elastic sort of law, and you can bet it will be stretched to the limit. Of course, a Republican state civil service board will stand in the way of our local civil service commission all it can. But say, suppose we carry the state sometime. Won't we fire the upstate board all right? Or we'll make it work in harmony with the local board. And that means that Tammany will get everything in sight. I know that the civil service humbug is stuck into the Constitution, too, but, as Tim Campbell said, what's the Constitution among friends? Say, 
the people's voice is smothered by the cursed civil service law it is the root of all evil in our government you hear of this thing and that thing going wrong in the nation the state or the city look down beneath the surface and you can trace everything wrong to civil service i have studied the subject and i know the civil service humbug is undermining our institutions and if a halt ain't called soon this great republic will tumble down like a park avenue house when they were building the subway and on its ruins will rise another russian government this is an awful serious proposition free silver the tariff and imperialism and the panama canal are trifling issues when compared with it we could worry along without any of these things but civil service is sapping the foundation of the whole shooting match let me argue it out for you i ain't up to sillygisms but i can give you some arguments that nobody can answer first this great and glorious country was built up by political parties second parties can't hold together if their workers don't get the offices when they win third if the parties go to pieces the government they built up must go to pieces too fourth then there'll be h to pay could anything be clearer than that say honest now can you answer that argument of course you won't deny that the government was built up by the great parties that's history and you can't go back of the returns as to my second proposition you can't deny that either when parties can't get offices they'll bust they ain't far from the bustin point now with all this civil service business keepin most of the good things from them how are you goin to keep up patriotism if this thing goes on you can't do it let me tell you that patriotism has been dying out fast for the last twenty years before then when a party won the workers got everything in sight that was something to make a man patriotic now when a party wins and its men come forward and ask for their rewards the reply is nothing doing unless you can answer a list of questions about egyptian mummies and how many years it will take for a bird to wear out a mass of iron as big as the earth by stepping on it once in a century i've studied politics and men for forty-five years and i see how things are drifting sad indeed is the change that has come over the young men even in my district where i try to keep up the fire of patriotism by getting a lot of jobs for my constituents whether tammany is in or out the boys and men don't get excited any more when they see a united states flag or hear the star-spangled banner they don't care no more for firecrackers on the fourth of july and why should they what is there in it for them they know that no matter how hard they work for the country in a campaign the jobs will go to fellows who can tell about the mummies and the birds stepping on the iron are you surprised then that the young men of the country are beginning to look coldly at the flag and don't care to put up a nickel for firecrackers say let me tell you of one case after the battle of san juan hill americans found a dead man with a light complexion red hair and blue eyes they could see he wasn't a spaniard although he had on a spanish uniform several officers looked him over him and then a private of the seventy-first regiment saw him and yelled good lord that's flaherty the man grew up in my district and he was once the most patriotic american boy on the west side he couldn't see a flag without yelling himself hoarse now how did he come to be lying dead with a spanish uniform on i found out all about it and i'll vouch for the story well in the municipal campaign of eighteen ninety seven that young man chock full of patriotism worked day and night for the tammany ticket tammany won and the young man determined to devote his life to the service of the city he picked out a place that would suit him and sent in his application to the head of department he got a reply that he must take a civil service examination to get the place he didn't know what these examinations were so he went all light-hearted to the civil service board he read the questions about the mummies the bird on the iron and all the other fool questions and he left that office an enemy of the country 
that he had loved so well. The mummies and the bird blasted his patriotism. He went to Cuba, enlisted in the Spanish army at the breaking out of the war, and died fighting his country. That is but one victim of the infamous civil service. If that young man had not run up against the civil examination, but had been allowed to serve his country as he wished, he would be in good office today, drawing a good salary. Ah, how many young men have had their patriotism blasted in the same way. Now what is going to happen when civil service crushes out patriotism? Only one thing can happen. The republic will go to pieces. Then a czar sultan will turn up which brings me to the fourthly of my argument, that is, there will be the H to pay, and that ain't no lie. End of chapter 3